What is going on buddy, Zach RC here, welcome back to the channel and welcome along to episode number 3 of the F122 Road to Goat Career Mode Series and the rain is pelting the Albert Park circuit for the 2022 running of the Australian Grand Prix on the brand new modified Albert Park circuit it's going to be really kept on our toes over the course of the race itself 29 laps, so it should be a very, very close one indeed started from P18 on the grid, I've got, I've got some work to do here so I might try and make up some places, maybe score some unlikely points there's the Drivers' Championship, Perez and Leclerc tied on 40 points apiece and signs 16 back in third. We're starting from 18th third, just in front of the two Aston Martins, but behind our teammate Alexander Albon to have to get, a, get in front of him off the start if we can. And there is Daniel Ricciardo for his home race starting in P9. Good stuff from the Honey Badger to try and make things further in the race. In terms of strategy, it's going to be mainly wet tyres and tap to switch to intermediates later on depending on not if the track gets dry. I'm going to lower the fuel as we always do, just give, make it a little bit faster off the start compared to everyone else. So without further ado, we'll jump into the race now. Five red lights for the Australian Grand Prix for third race of our Formula 1 career. Lights out, foot to the floor, go, 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 go. Poor getaway compared to Vettel on the left-hand side and Stroll might try and get us as well on the run down towards that first corner. Stroll on our right-hand side but already down to the back of the pack. We have to dive back, back to up around the outside of Stroll and try and go in between the two Aston Martins here going three abreast into turn one. We've made it work, we've got past both of them so we're back up into P18. Um, Alex Albon's already passed Nick Schumacher in front of us. So we've got some work to try and get past him now. And go for a dive, try and get both Albon and Schumacher if we can into turn number three then into one of the first newly remodified corner on the circuit. And that's Job Dome around around Schumacher. Albon's to our left there to make our way through turn number four. It's very tight between us. And we just about get the edge of him by about half a car and solo. And they'll tuck back in behind us to make our way out of turn four through turn five. So Magnuson right there in front of us. So decent start to the Grand Prix. Is setting opening sector there to kick off the race itself. Pushing on to lap number two now. Still chasing Magnuson there in front of us. Gonna try and make a move on if we can. He's got a poor exit out of the chicane and making our way down towards that newly modified right-hander at the end of this straight. We're using a bit of our back to the start of the straight. We want to try and make him work out of the chicane. And going to the inside of him now. We're drawing alongside through the corner. Just about avoiding the red curb there. And getting past him and through it into P15. And we've got a yellow flag behind us. That's Lance Stroll, to my knowledge, in the Aston Martin. Yes, it is. You'll see he's managed to manage to spin all by himself there at the back of the pack, so very unfortunate for him. He's going to lose a decent amount of time to the cars in front, but it's not too much. He can definitely work that back, but the Aston Martins at the foot of the running order and into the second lap of this Australian Grand Prix. Pushing on to lap number four now, our next target being Yuki Sonoda. We had a message through there saying that the track is, the thick weather is starting to ease off perhaps a little bit, so it might be time for a change to inches at some point. Let's see what the rest of the pack is. Pushing to up number six now, and I'm thinking that the, at this point the track is, the, the rain is easing off to, to some extent. So I think it's probably time for us to call in very late on towards making our way to our pit box and calling in to come into pit this lap for our first stop of the race. And I think we'll probably have to make another stop later. Go on to dry tyres should, should they become necessary. Magnus is sorry, Schumacher going behind us there in the half. So the four of us going to pit, Perez, Ricardo, ourselves and Schumacher. And it's good to be a good stop for our, for our Williams team to get us out in front of the half, which we should do without issue. Intermediate tyres now going on and we are away. It's a 2.8 second stop. It's not the best of stops, but it's good enough to keep us in front of the German, but only by, not by too much, because there he is right behind us. We're a bit slow. He had to the pit limiter, so he's right behind us now on the exit. He can't get past us, otherwise he needs to go over that white line. That's not allowed. So he's going to stick behind us for the time being. On to lap number 10 now. We've pushed quite a few, a few more laps on into this Grand Prix. And we're still holding off Schumacher by about like four tenths there and just get behind us. And we've got a yellow flag over and down on the main straight. I'm not quite sure. That's one of the Alpines. And it's looking like that is Fernando Alonso, to my knowledge. He's running there up in the fourth position, doing a spectacular job. Let's have a look at what's, exactly what's gone wrong with Alonso here. So there he is running in P4. He's got Lando Norris in fifth place just behind him. And he's, it's just, it looks like an internal failure. As there goes the two silver arrows in the Mercedes cars charging through turn one. Alonso going quite slow and holding up the cars behind him. And I believe that is, um, that's Norris and I believe that's Max Verstappen as well he's holding up. So unfortunate for them. He's got a bit, they've got a bit of work now in order to get back into back into the pace. But Alonso looks like he's out of this one. And very unfortunate. He, come, he moves up to the side of the track coming up in front of Sonoda. And I believe that's Charles Leclerc. Sorry, that color signs in the Ferrari. In a couple of cars, he's forcing wide through turn one. So it's going to be the end of the race for the Alpine driver. That's very, very unfortunate for Alonso, who retires from the Grand Prix. And there is the message for us saying he's out of the session. But that'll be another place gained for us. That's important. That puts us up into P16. Now, the virtual safety car has been deployed as well. So that's just slow things down quite a bit. 
a safety car would have meant potentially a change in tyres. Some drivers have gone to fresh inters, and so it's a good thing we didn't have that. So we've still got a bit of work to do to close up to the cars in front. Now we'll have to see how the weather reacts later on in the race. Schumacher and Vettel still right there behind us, and they're right with us as the virtual safety car comes to an end. But we get caught up a bit with the Delta, and we have to slow before the restart. And we're, there we are going back to green flag racing now, and Schumacher's all over us here. Oh, they have a bit of a skid there, and there goes Vettel up his inside, taking full advantage of his young protege in the house. And there, so there's Vettel up into P17 just behind us, and we're still on to 16th place on the restart. We've gone a bit too deep into the right hand, so Vettel could see opportunity to try and move up the inside, but I think we're going to keep him behind us just for the time being. Despite going a little bit wide there for that last last little corner. In terms of the weather report, it's still looking like the rain will be easing off us in around 10 minutes or so. So potentially we could see a change onto dry tyres later on in this race. Better having another go at us now. On lap number 12, we're going to look to our outside and give them the space. The German Maestro on our outside, making our way into the right-hander once again. Nice and clean, keeping him just behind us there. So keep things nice and smooth. But I doubt we'll be able to keep him behind for much longer as he looks trying to look to the inside once again. We've got to cover him off. As we make our way through that last sector into the last couple of corners, we've gone straight on there. And we've gone way, too, way late on the brakes. And Vettel now finding his way past us. He sees the opportunity has been given to him. We've gone wide in the penultimate corner. And there we go, Vettel getting past us for P16. So that's to try and use some of our ERS. Try and chase him back down. There's shoulders behind us coming back from his spin earlier on in the race. So on to lap number 13 now. One lap later, we're still pressuring Vettel as we make our way towards the right-hander. Now to go very late on the brakes as we so often have enjoyed in these first few races so far. Over the inside of Vettel and job done. Avoiding the red curb in the corner as well. So that's great stuff for us to manage to get that place back. It's Williams still quick comparing to the Aston Martins. Albon is two places up on us right now. But he's on those wet tyres. And we are closing in on the wet tyre runners. Track is drying just that little bit more. As we move on to lap number 14 now. We've got a spinning Guan Yu Zhou, or a spun out Guan Yu Zhou there on the exit of turn number three. We managed to avoid him without too much trouble. We've got, we gained a bit of time on Vettel. He's about a second behind us now. And Stroll's managed to find his way around Schumacher as well. We've gone way wide there through turn number five. So that's to make sure it's keeping under control as these inters get more and more worn. There's your weather report. It's still looking the same sort of thing. And Sonoda out of the session. So Sonoda as up comes our second retirement. That's Australian Grand Prix. And it brings out the virtual safety car. There is his car. The Alpha Tower is stricken on the left hand side of the track. Second VSC of this Grand Prix. That's a look at just what's happened to Sonoda here. I think it may be like Alonso, just another internal failure. And that bringing about the end of his Grand Prix. A bit of contact with Valtteri Bottas as he goes charging on through. Uh, he pulls the car up to the side and that is the end of the Grand Prix for Sonoda, who he enjoyed such a great battle with last time out in Saudi Arabia. The virtual safety car now coming to an end. We're coming a little bit better this time, hopefully, as we make our way through. We're pretty safe on the Delta. And the green flag now coming back out. And we have just about done that quite right. Better about six or seven tenths back as it stands. Still got 14 more laps to go, and it's not, not looking like the rain is the rain is easing up, or the track is drying enough just yet for slicks. So we've got a bit of time to wait still before going on to another set of tyres if we feel that we need to. Uh, I'm speaking of pit in though, some of the other drivers coming into the pits around us. Albon's into the pits, and we've got from P12 now. And there's P11 Ocon right there in front of us, having just emerged from the pit lane in, in the one Alpine car, still in the Grand Prix. I try and chase him down here, try and make a late breaking move into turn three if we can. They're pulled to the inside, go very, very late on the stoppers and to the inside of him, getting the job done nice and clean, no contact. And that's P11 secure for us now. I'm going to try and chase down Pierre Gasly, who's running up there in the 10th position, pushing on further into the lap. The Ocon challenging us around the outside. We'll see what he can make of us, making the Frenchman going through the chicane. There's the yellow in front of us, and it's Gasly. Pierre Gasly spins on the exit of the chicane. We've managed to avoid him. We have to skid a little bit there just to avoid running right into him. But that puts us up into the points, paying places. What's happened to Gasly here? It looks like he's just lost the car all by himself. He just pushed it too hard as he was chasing Norris in the McLaren there. As you see ourselves, a knock-on flying past him. And that puts us, as I say, up into the points, paying places for the first time in our F1 career. We've got to try and hold on to this as best we can, but there's the pit window for our, what, what could be a second stop here. But at this point, this could be our best shot of points. So I'm taking a massive gamble on here. I'm going to try and make it to the end of the race on these intermediate tyres. It's a stupid idea and it may not actually work out, but I'm willing to take that chance and try and score some very rare points to this Williams team. Plus, we should see some more cars coming into the pits. That should potentially gain us a couple more places if possible. I know Ricardo is next coming for a stop and the end of lap number 17 in he comes, Perez and Ricardo. The Red Bull gets out in front. The McLaren might not be so lucky. Down the main straight, there is the Honey Badger on our right-hand side as we run down towards that first corner. Ocon still pressuring us all the way into turn one. Now try and go around the outside of the Australian here through turn number two, and we've managed to get the job done. Just that we're not quite yet because we're still side by side with him. Ricardo gets back in front. Going to have to use a toe, making our way towards turn number three, similar to how we did on Ocon just a few laps ago. Up the inside, nice and clean. No contact made in these wet weather conditions. The rain not phasing us as we move up into what I believe is P8. 
of this Australian Grand Prix. So brilliant stuff here. We're still pushing forward. Excuse me, it's not quite P8, it's P9 at the moment. But Bottas coming into the pits now, so it will now be P8. But we can beat the Alfa Romeo car out, and we should without issue. He's yet to actually cross the start line. So lap number 19 of this Grand Prix now. These tyres might not go to the end. Right now we're in P8. So this could be a brilliant result. Should we manage to get to Pearl? So we've really got to manage the tyres in this late stage of the Grand Prix. So I don't think we'll make another, another stop. We simply can't afford to make that other stop. So on to the end, end of lap number 19. Now Ricardo on the chase. Potentially looking at a move to the inside. He's going very late on the brakes. We're forcing him over the curb. Didn't quite realise he was there until the last possible moment. He really went for it there. In typical Ricardo fashion. He's still on our inside there. Making our way to the corner. He's gone a bit wide there. And Ricardo all bit of a skip himself. And he makes his way out of the corner. And Ocon still keeps behind him for the moment. So he's managed to keep the Frenchman behind. So it's not quite over yet for these two chasing us down. As we move on to lap number 21 here. Ricardo's gone way deep into turn one. It's another mistake from the McLaren driver. That's going to put us a great deal of, of time in front. 1.2 seconds now. And that could be a crucial concern. We need to bring these tyres in. If we can ease off them for just a little bit, that might help us out. We're already getting the orange tyre warnings. In the lap, uh, midway through lap 23. Ricardo's brought that gap back down. He's just four tenths behind us here, and the weather is still not looking like it's drying enough for slicks just yet. And even if it does, I doubt we'll actually be able to pit because no one will. They'll try and run the inter to the end because the track will still be somewhat wet in place. He's on to lap number 26 now. They're giving us our first potential chance to change tyres. We're rejecting it. We're going to try and go to the end on these as best we can. And as the laps run down, you see how bad the tyres are. They're screaming for a break at this point. But you can definitely see just how likely it is we could potentially pull this one off. Let's, let's make our way down the main straight. Just three more laps to go. If we can make this, this will genuinely be our first point for the Williams team and, and in our F1 career. Ricardo is still behind us. We've cut the corner through turn one. No warning, surprisingly. And now Ocon has managed to find his way around Ricardo. And look at this. It's just the red tyre warning and a second attempt to try and get us to change tyres. No such luck. Ocon on our, our right hand side now. He's about to cover him off just about. Is he coming through now to make, it, make our way towards two more laps? left to go in this Grand Prix. It's going to be very, very entertaining for we can actually make it to the finish line here. And then defending from these guys behind will be another matter entirely towards the end of lap 27. Now, as I say, coming on to the penultimate lap of this race, it's becoming more and more likely that we could genuinely pull this off and score points. Is it make our way through the final corner? And is that a problem? I think it is. And that is now, no, that's a puncture on the car and we're at the back left tire. And that's not what you want to see two laps with two laps left to go when they're trying to score points for this Williams team that may not see many of them this season. Ricardo and Ocon go flying past. Bit of contact between the two of them. And you see how much we're struggling there. Sliding off onto the grass. And all of a sudden, a gamble that like it just might pay off. Now sees us plummeting down the order in quite dramatic style. As Albon's found his way past us as well. And I don't think there's much more chance of us competing for anything in this race. A puncture bringing about the end of our hopes. You can see the tyre struggling there. We, we, we just got to try and hold on to the car for the time being. But no, we spin out for good measure. And I dare say that might be all there really is to say in this Grand Prix. So we've got no choice but to retire. And a gamble that so very nearly paid off. Doesn't end up the way we wanted it to. But that's Formula 1 for you sometimes. But it's just a very, very disappointing result to cap off what could have been such a jubilant day for us. We've witnessed some great battles on the streets of Melbourne today then. And they've taken a fantastic win. So Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams. And they're certainly proving themselves. There you have it then. Max Verstappen takes his first victory of the season in Australia in the rain. Brilliant Grand Prix for the Dutchman, which will help him close some points in the Drivers' Championship after his retirement last time out in Saudi Arabia. But for us, it's such a frustrating way to end the Grand Prix, retiring with just a lap and a half to go with a puncture. The most frustrating way to finish this one off. But we took the risk, and I'm glad we took the risk. It didn't quite pay off, but sometimes you have those days. You must try and regroup and fight back in the next race, try and potentially get some points on the board if we can. Charles Leclerc's points today take him to the top of the championship standings. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Well, Lance Stroll would be my pick. He managed to keep a cool head today whilst pushing through the field. It's time to check out the constructors' standings and Red Bull take over as championship leaders.
Another team that will be satisfied with this Grand Prix is Alfa Romeo, whose good result moves them further up the championship. Well, that was certainly an exciting weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for more exciting Formula One action very soon. So there we have it then, the end of another fascinating Grand Prix in the F122 Road to Goat series. I do hope you are enjoying it so far. In the end of it then, it's P18, exactly where we started. So not all is lost in that respect. We didn't lose any places over the course of the race from start to finish in terms of final position. But finishing classified two laps down, Albon comes home in 13th. And of course, they were top 10 were there up at the top. Verstappen in first. And we had Leclerc in second. And Hamilton taking home in third. In terms of the Drivers' Championship, it's Leclerc who now shows the way by nine points to Sergio Perez. And it's Verstappen now up to third with 15 points off the top. So Red Bull's now chasing Charles Leclerc down for the championship lead. And in terms of the constructors, we're still down there in ninth as Red Bull and Ferrari now sit tired at the top of the table. So it'll be a very entertaining fight for those guys later on into the season. But guys, that is the end of this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, then make sure to like, share and subscribe. We're trying to reach a thousand subscribers for the end of the year. So if you could help me out with that, it'd be really, really appreciated. So thank you once again. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I shall see you all in my next video. Have a good day. I'll see you later.